uh, telling a lot of young people and people in, in China come to uh, Canada. Tell them what a what, lot of si people say Vancouver, take for example, is the city most suitable for people to live. <laughs> what does the city look like? Right. So you see the environment, the trees, the air, the sky, which we never see that in Beijing for a long, long time. <laughs> The most luxury I think the thing, thing is, in Vancouver, you can't see the air. In Beijing, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fog and rain. And, and I think... You see the rain, but we're not going to tell them we're about not the rain tell in them, Vancouver. Don't tell but one, one thing I want to also tell, the, the, the encourage the Chinese tourism, not only to, uh, to Canada, to all of the world, especially the developed countries, Tokyo, New York, San Francisco, Vancouver, and... Uh, you know, these big cities all had the same problems like uh, China, Beijing did. Yeah. If they can make it, why China cannot make it? Yeah. Of course. Right? If, if Vancouver, if New York and Tokyo, the, London, they clean the airs, why China could not? This is I want more Chinese people, young people, travel around the world, learn from, respect, appreciate the culture of the different country. People coming here, I think most of Chinese people will be shocked by such great environment that your country have. Mm -hmm. If a country with such a great environment, people have the trust on the products, services you make. So this is what we think we are passionate about. Yeah. And the second, how can we encourage them? Of course, we have a Ali trip. We have a so, you know, half billion people using our services. <laughs> we also would love to uh, uh, hope that uh, the Canadian government can give an easy visa problem for China. <laughs> uh, I think that was it's a hint. not easy, <laughs> and it's not easy for young people in China to get visas. If you're using traditional ways, you have to deposit the money in the bank and get a certificate. Oh my God, it's so complicated. <laughs> Today, using Alipay, they have the Sesame rating system, easy. We should <laughs> trust the young people. <laughs> right? <laughs> if Canada... For the record, this is not the first time Jack's made that pitch yeah. to me. <laughs> And if, Jack knows it's actually not if, that easy for Canadians to yeah, China if Canada, sometimes either. If Canada announced easy visa for Chinese young people with great rating system based on the payment or whatever we system created, I think it's going to be huge news. It's going to be great incentive to Chinese tourism. <laughs> young people love to come here. When they come here, their generation will come here. This is good. <laughs> This is I wanna I wanna I'm pushing the government <laughs> for a long time, and I think we will. Work, I promise, as Alibaba chairman, we will keep everybody coming to China, come to Canada with with online visa. We will have a good rating for them. If they if they do something wrong, we will punish them instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think we've just we'll, heard about we'll Alibaba. <laughs> We'll talk about that. It's, uh, and, also, it's I, and also, please, the immigration department, give those people more, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no problem, but people coming to this country, they don't know a lot of uh, the culture and things. So like, I like my city, Hangzhou. We, people, if they make driving, the, the people from the other cities, when they come to our city, oh, they don't have the traffic rules and they're all going to be bad. The policemen normally don't give them tough time. I heard the best place to put the city is if I came 20 years ago, you would have given me a tour of it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a full confidence in Canada improving the tourism. And when, when Chinese tourists come, they're going to buy a lot of things you out. You know, they say, oh, I want to buy this, I want to buy that. With the logistic system we build up, they can shopping, spending money, and uh, logistics will, will send their products back home immediately. <laughs> it's going to increase a lot of jobs here, and these jobs are normally designed for small business because $5,000, $10,000, you can be a good servant agent to serve those hotels and bars and restaurants and all these things. This is what I feel passionate about and I think this is what Alibaba <laughs> want to do. Outstanding. Yeah.
After running 500 million people's community, I know how tough it is to be government. <laughs> One percent of them are bad guys. I got a 50 million percent bad guy. 50 million bad guys. Oh, they're crazy. Right. So as a as a as a, as a well, unfortunately, there's no bad guys in Canada. We, uh, everyone, Canada's an easy place we to govern. Have good ones. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. But anyway, for running a company, fifty-four thousand. If we think he's this guy is not qualified, we can fire him. But you cannot fire a citizen. <laughs> right. More complicated. You got so many things to deal with. So when I compare to this uh, politician, this greatest, I say, well, Jack. Life is so easy for us. Of course, I fly over 867 hours in the air last year. But, you, don't you know. You live on Earth anymore. Yeah, so, but <laughs> I operated my company on the mobile. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is that when you think you're tough, look at the others. The other people is much tougher than you are. When you think you're, you're to good. To wake up tomorrow morning better. and say, I'm not Justin Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His job is much harder. Uh, you know what, and, and uh, everyone's job is tough. Everyone has to compete different interests. Everyone has to figure out how to balance a uh, personal life, a family with work. Uh, we all have to figure out what matters uh, in our lives. And, and for me, and I know it for you as well, Jack, that what drives you is the people you serve, is your customers, yes. is the folks who actually count on you uh, to help them get ahead, to give them opportunities, but also uh, get them the products they need. And what keeps me going, what keeps governments going, is the opportunity to serve and give opportunities to uh, their citizens. And we're always competing different interests, uh, and there's always, you know, no matter what we do, there's people who hate it, and there's people who love it, and there's people who don't even know what you've done. Uh, that's just the way it is. But if you stay connected with people, you stay thinking about not just what they want, but what their dreams are and how they want to see the future, uh, then you know you're on the right track. And whether you're a small business uh, or you're an entrepreneur or a government, if you stay connected uh, to the people that you serve, uh, you're not going to go too wrong. And that's, that's your lesson and that's one right. I got from you. Absolutely. So we never drive our company because of competition. Mm -hmm. I never feel passion because we'll make more revenue and profit next month. Of course, if we're revenue profit, I'm happy. But this is not something. The thing drive me, drive us, is the Alibaba smile on the customers. Yeah. They made money. They hired more people. They paid more tax. They bought a new car. This is something. It's much more fun than you make a lot of money. When I, when I sit in the restaurant, somebody pay my bill. Somebody give me a cigar say, thank you very much, Jack. Because of Alibaba, I made a lot of money. I want to pay your bills. That's the most fun part of your life. That is something drivers continue to do. You can't do that for me. There's an ethics commission. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, I pay my own bill. I did that. <laughs> thank you for the thought. <laughs> That's why it's easier for us. <laughs> much easier for us. Yeah. yeah, as an entrepreneur, you have to be optimistic. If you're not optimist, you cannot survive for three months. It's your job to be optimistic. Yeah. Think about, if you cannot do it, somebody will be able to do it. If somebody able to be able to do it, why you cannot do it? So this is optimistic. Second, build a good team. The team not listen to you, not because they listen to you. The team because they can comprehend the things that you are not good at. So a good team is so critical for an for a team. Most of, a lot of uh, internet companies, American, go, go to China, not successful. One of the reasons is that they send people there not make custom happy. They send people that make boss happy. Do not hire the people who make you happy. Hire the people <laughs> who believe the dream, make the custom happy. And a third, stay focused. If you do not stay for, there are nine rabbits, you change this rabbit, change that rabbit, change the time, <laughs> you go nowhere. So stay focused is the key. And then have patience. Think the future. So global vision, local win. Mm -hmm. Finally, the most important. Open and put your business online. <laughs>
if without that and doing business, think about the China, and then after China, think about Africa, Europe. I am 100% confident in Canadian products. You guys produce excellent products. You absolutely can find customers online, China, and other world. So you start to learn. In the first three years as a startup, remember, first three years, the most difficult period. Surviving three years, you will get used to failure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get used to success. Get used to failure. And then you get stronger. So five years later, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur for five years, you don't have reason to give up. Because if you give up, you don't, have a you don't know what, where, which companies you're joining. Because you always that. So this is my advice. Stay focused. Build a good team. Be optimistic. And always believe today is difficult. Tomorrow is more difficult. The day after tomorrow is beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening. <laughs> you have to work hard, then you can survive.